Welcome to Fabian's community video. In this tutorial video, he will show us how he creates a shockwave effect with our new smoke renderer. The first thing Fabian is going to do here is he creates the text. For that, he uses standard 3D Studio Max tools, the text tool. So nothing special here, just extrude a little bit, adjust the sizes, and there we go. UV mapping is important. For an effect we want to use, we want our smoke to pick up the uh, texture of our object. So that's important for later. He could have used a 3D procedural map, but for the uh, test here, he's using a standard checker texture map, which is a 2D map. We are also assigning different material IDs so that we can control later where we want to emit the particles from. That's always a helpful feature. When you assign material IDs, it gives you just much more control. And for the case of this tutorial, we want to emit the materials from the sides and not from the front faces of our text. Now we are creating this material. We want to have a nice material on both sides, on the top side and the sides of the text. And that's it. We are also creating a ground plane here. Simple plane where we just assign a standard material for now. So that's about it. Here we have our objects. And if you like to work with layers, you can put all these objects on a layer if you want. And now we create our thinking particles system. When we work with thinking particles, we want to make sure that the real-time playback in the viewport is turned off. That's a very important setting and it's especially useful for particle animations. Thinking particles needs to render and calculate particles in a linear manner. So when the playback doesn't catch up, it can be trouble and really not a nice experience. So turn this off. So Fabian is creating here um, the dynamic sets, the particle groups, and it's really good practice, as you see here, is organize your flow, organize your dynamic sets. Name them properly. This will help you later in a great way, because then you find the stuff. And even if you pass on the scene to someone else, he will be able to just keep on working and understand what you're doing. If you name everything dynamic set, dynamic set, dynamic set, dynamic set, have fun passing this on to someone else. He will not understand what you're trying to do with your dynamic set. So here, Fabian is creating the particles. He's using a born and a surface position. He's feeding in our text into the surface position operator. And now some uh, little bit more magic here. He wants to set the position of the particles. And what he wants to achieve with this setup is he wants to give the particles an offset along the normal of our text object. So along the normals, he wants to have a random offset of particles created. So for that, he's using a simple vector math where he grabs the normal, the surface normal. He feeds in the surface normal he gets from the text object and a random number generator that uses the particle and assigns a random number. So for that, we want to create, as I said, based on the surface normal, we want to offset the particles a little bit along this vector. 
So pretty simple, pretty straightforward thing to get a, a new position for our particles along the surface now. The order of the operators is important. Keep that in mind. Fabian is now checking for the random value how much offset he wants for his scene. You can see in real time as he adjusts how much amount of random he wants for his effect. The next thing we are going to do is create some dynamic forces. We want to affect the particles with a force. Fabian is using a standard wind force of 3D Studio Max. Thinking Particle supports many ways to influence particles, including standard Max procedures like the space warps, the standard wind force. Wind force is a nice one. It has a vis visible display of the decay values, so it makes it easier to adjust. So the force is placed in the center of our text object and we turn on the range indicators and now we adjust our decay. We just want to touch barely the outer edges of our text object. And we bind it to the TP helper object and that's all we need to do. Now in our standard force operator we just activate the force and that should be it and yes it is you can see the particles are blown from the center to the outside fabian changes the uh, display method to drops that will give you a visual indicator of the vector length how fast the particles move the next dynamic sets are now for our smoke operator What we want to have here is a smoke fluid that makes the particles behave like dust or smoke that's blown from the center to the outside. To get a really nice whirl and smoke or fume effect, you can use our new smoke operators in Thinking Particles 6.2. And as we can see and learn, Fabian is very good at organizing and structuring his dynamic sets. That's how dynamic sets should look like. Put them in separate spaces, separate hi hierarchies. This will give you a lot of power in the long run. Because afterwards, when you want to cache, for example, you have much more control and power over your dynamic sets. So smoke solvers work that we add in a smoke solver, a smoke group, a renderer, and also for coloring, we have a smoke T-range. In addition, we want to have a smoke boundary as well, where we just add our text object. So we want to collide with our text object and we want to collide our smoke with the ground object as well. And a little playback, we can see it's already really coming along together really nicely. What Fabian is using is he always starts with the spacing value Spacing gives him a huge advantage because spacing adjusts multiple settings in one go. So multiple parameters are adjusted by just modifying spacing. So he just plays around and checks several spacing values. And when he finds one he's really happy with, he starts to go into deeper and fine tuning. Here you can see buoyancy is already working. So the smoke is rising way too much, too fast. So he's reducing the buoyancy. And now it looks really nice. We see the first worlds appearing, rotations. So it looks really nice. This is the power of Thinking Particles 6.2. You can really adjust your smoke and fume effects in real time in the viewport. Now he is adding a little bit more vorticity. So he really likes and loves these worlds. And they become much stronger as you can see here in the playback. The next we're going to adjust is a little bit of the pressure expand. 
that will push all particles away from each other. And depending on your taste and look you want to achieve, you can increase or decrease this. The next thing Fabian is doing here is increasing the external force so that our wind gets much, much stronger. Playing around with the viscosity is also a really interesting thing because it keeps the particle motion together so they behave more like a fluid. And friction is also important because friction is causing whirls and twirls in space. So higher friction values might create a much nicer look. To me that already looks really nice and powerful what we can see here. The next thing we want to see is our colors. What colors do we get and how does it work? The default value here is the temperatures. So we see our temperature range here. As the particles cool down, they change in temperature and so they change in color. Fabian wants to control the color based on the texture of the object. So this is why he's adding a color channel to the uh, smoke particles. This color channel is chosen, you choose this in the uh, smoke render. And there you just say, okay, I want color channel zero to take my color from the particles. Now we need to write the color information into the color channel of each particle. This is what we are doing here right now. We use the texture map color operator that will give us from a UV coordinate the texture color. And we do that per particle. And we want to set the data channel, the color data channel. So what we did here is we stored for each particle at the place of birth, the UV coordinate, the color. And now we just have to choose the same texture and this will give us the same color for each particle right at the position of birth. The great thing is you also see that in the viewport right away. It's a very powerful feature to control the smoke color in Thinking Particles 6.2. Another channel Fabian creates is the temperature channel for caching the dynamic set. You can cache the particles like any other particle as well in Thinking Particles. And to create a cache file, you need to store the temperature of the particles in their separate data channel. And that's what we are doing here. But before we cache, we want to increase the amount of particles. And when we increase the amount of particles, we have to adjust a little bit our spacing as well, so that our simulation still looks the same. That's what Fabian did here. The only thing left to do is pick the dynamic set we want to record, press the record button, save it to a file, and we record the cache file now. This is a little bit of a time warp we have here. Recording done. And here we have our cached particles, including the original colors we stored in the particles as well. However, if you wish to change the color afterwards, so you want to work right out of the cache but still influence the colors or change the colors, you can do so. What you see here is the a uh, little bit of an older method, so he turns off the color channel and he switches to the original colors now. As you can see, when we play back, we get our color ranges from our color gradient, as you can see it here, where we can adjust the temperature and the color based on a gradient. So each color represents a temperature in our temperature gradient. Let's adjust it. And remember, we are just right now playing back from cache. So the particles, this fluid sim simulation is already done and we are adjusting the colors afterwards. That's also a very powerful feature. However, we can go back to the stored colors anytime and then we will use the color information from the particles themselves. 
Now let's do a rendering. Rendering the effect is also a simple step to adjust and find the properties. Usually everything is dependent on the density. However, we want some light. Thinking Particles comes with an atmospheric point renderer that allows you to render these particles as volumes and it supports lights, shadow casting, self shadows, light scattering, all kinds of uh, physical accurate effects. So we're creating here a standard light. One important thing to remember is you have to check the atmospheric shadows option on in your light. If you don't do that, you will not see shadows at all. That's a standard 3D Studio Max workflow. Okay, here's our first rendering. Still not much to see. We are still adjusting the lights. And we are going into the smoke render. That's our atmospheric render engine, where we are now going to adjust the shading and how we want to affect our volumetric effect. We can see uh, some specs already. So the atmospheric is showing up a little bit, just a tiny bit. We are increasing the smoothing radius so that we cover a broader range and that will make it also softer. And another thing we're now going is we're changing the shading method to flat shading that will give us now a much nicer look of our smoke effect. And we want to have also some uh, visual motion blur. We add that here. And the next thing is bring up the density just a tiny bit. And there we go. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.